I'm looking really pale. It's the lighting. It's the lighting. So, update. The melatonin I took last night worked. Kicked in around 30 minutes. Um, but I didn't go to bed until like an hour and a half after taking it. I don't fall asleep at a normal time lately. Oh my god, I look way too pale. Hold on. Now it just looks dark in here, but whatever. Um, I've been having trouble falling asleep. Uh, which is fine. It's fine. We're gonna get through this together. But I needed to be awake super early today because I have an oncologist appointment. I'm wearing Britney Spears perfume today because gotta love that queen. But yeah, melatonin worked. I am awake. I slept for like six hours, but it's crazy because these six hours feel more rested versus my other six hours that I usually get because that's such a weird time. So, oh hi, I look blue. I just want to say congrats to me. Oh, let me take some of this off because when we went to Target yesterday, we got the salmon, we got the shrimp, we got the cat food, but I forgot the edamame. Ugh. Actually, I could just erase the whole thing. Yes. Um, not gonna lie. I feel pretty rested, but I feel like I'm gonna get like super tired later, so <laughs> might take a nap. Wouldn't need melatonin if you did anything during the day. Of course you can't sleep. You never really started your day to begin with. Your brain and body are like sleep. You haven't moved for 14 hours. Okay, so we're here at the cancer center and I'm sad. Okay, bye. Oh, okay, you guys have breakfast with me. I'm having the um, chocolate peanut butter premier protein, which I've never tried it before. So we're gonna try that together. And just a clementine. It's not really breakfast. I just call it what I have when I first wake up. I have already taken my nap. I've already gotten my results back. I've already done all that. I look like I've been asleep. <laughs> yeah, um, so I had a really good nap. By the way, like melatonin, okay, I don't remember my dreams, very rare, but melatonin gave me some wild dreams. Like me and my girlfriend were like in a car that like drove itself. I was getting like constantly ate by rattlesnakes i don't know and i had to like take them off of me and like throw them it was really weird i'm not trying to make people not take melatonin because definitely do it if you're having trouble sleeping because i was actually able to be well rested did not wake up not once throughout the night which i usually do so it was like great stuff right now i'm like super allergies right now okay so let me get this straight Amberlyn dreamed about being in a car on autopilot with Jade while being ate by rattlesnakes, right? Okay, but what about the symbolic interpretation? Using dream theory for this, it could be interpreted that she subconsciously feels out of control in the relationship and isn't paying attention to her health nearly as good as she claims. So, my appointment. So I went in. <laughs> I said, I have an appointment for 8 o'clock with... Blah, blah, blah. My name is Amber Reed, R-E-I-D, birthday 12-27-90. They said, your appointment's not in the system. <laughs> okay. So I had an appointment with my oncologist because I've been taking estradiol for two years after having endometrial, which is uterine cancer, and I had a hysterectomy, and after my hysterectomy, they said, you're gonna be taking this for the rest of your life, so I trusted them. I've been getting refills, you guys. It's been 24 months now. And no one has said anything until this month. They said, you should not be taking this. Why are you taking this? Because I was prescribed. So they're like, you need to come in. You, We need to have like a checkup and see what's going on. Like who prescribed this to you? Like everyone was so confused. I wasn't even in their system. I don't even know. So we scheduled an appointment for today, the 21st of July. I go in the 21st of July and they said that I'm still not in the system, that my appointment wasn't scheduled. My oncologist is super popular, super amazing. So 
her schedule was all filled. So I had to see a nurse practitioner, which is totes fine because this cancer center is. Her life must be so exhausting, trying to juggle a bunch of lies in your head every time you turn the camera on to do your job. As the saying goes, you don't need to have a good memory if you always tell the truth. So the nurse practitioner, uh, when I told her why I was there, I, I she had fear in her eyes. She did. She said, you should not be taking this medicine because it has now increased the chances of you getting cancer again. Yeah, it has now increased the chances of you getting cancer again and patients with your history should not be taking it. Should I sue them? <laughs> Malpractice? I don't understand. She was completely shocked. She was like, sorry, I'm making jokes out of the situation because I, for one, am a little like terrified here. I, I... You put your life in the hands of professionals and I love these professionals. People make mistakes. They're not robots, but I'm angry if I, if I was to have a health problem because of this, I'd be very, very angry. Obviously it has now put me in harm's way. So she's trying to figure out who prescribed me the medicine, which there has been several doctors who have because like, I remember some of my pill bottles, like there was just like, I remember at first it was my oncologist and then it was someone else. It was a male, actually it was a male name that I don't even know who it was, was a few times. And then there was a new girl on my uh, bottle. Cause you know, like when you get something prescribed, like the doctor's name is on it. I don't understand what's happening. Um, and then like, even when I went in there and they were like looking through my file, they had nothing on me. It was so strange. I, I feel like honestly, I'm partially in the twilight zone right now. I, I don't know. I just feel so freaking weird. So the nurse practitioner was very honest, very open and said, this is not good. So she, um, got my blood taken and we did like a cancer marker thing. And in the middle of my nap, she called and I said, hello. <laughs> um, and I'm good. She said it was perfect. Um, they like, I don't really know that like the technical terms, but the number is supposed to be below 40 and mine was five. So that's really, really good. Um, and they're scheduling me for a CT scan because it's time that I get another one of those because I did explain that I get like pelvic pain sometimes. Like if I'm like lifting something super heavy or if I do a lot of bending, she explained that scar tissue from hysterectomy. That's probably what that is, but just in case, um, I am going to get another CT scan. Uh, so I'm done with estrogen, you guys. I'm officially going through like actual menopause and I'm just young. I know people even younger have gone through this, so I'm not saying like, oh my God, this is the worst thing in the world. I mean, for someone... Sorry, I'm uploading the video and scheduling it. I had to check on it though. For someone who has never like been through, you know what? I'm not gonna explain myself. I'm scared. This is a scary situation. I'm anxious. I'm worried. I um, am sad. Like, I'm just having like a hard time showing it because I think I'm in shock that I've been taking this medicine for two years that could possibly have given me cancer. Like ma'am, I, I don't know. I just feel so weird about it. I, I don't know. Maybe it hasn't hit me yet. Yeah, it was really weird to actually be back in the cancer center. It brought back a lot of memories because like in the beginning I was there all the time and I have a little bit of regret. I wish I would have filmed my cancer journey a little bit more because there's a lot of things that I went through that I wish I had documented, honestly. And that's one of the reasons why I love vlogging because I have all this stuff documented and I like to go back and look at it and such. I think it's time to peel this because... <laughs> Either she absolutely had endometrial cancer 
Apart from showing her hospital paperwork, she had a hysterectomy. There is no way they would have done that at her size unless she had a cancer diagnosis. Because she was far too high risk. There is also no way in hell they would have ever prescribed her estrogen unless she had a hysterectomy, but she could have had the hysterectomy because of discovered pre-cancer cells. Cancer, or pre-cancer. She 100% underwent a total hysterectomy thus requiring hormone replacement. Whether she actually took the prescribed hormone replacements at all, I'll leave it up to you to answer yourself. I should also mention precancerous does not always mean it will become cancer. It is fair though at this point for us to assume she's going to give the worst case scenario for precancerous, because of attention. After all, when has Amber ever not exaggerated or even flat out lied about something? Her refills were expired. Because she would stop taking them, and for long enough the refill dates would expire. We know she didn't take them as directed, because she says so, constantly, throughout her video history, about estrogen and other meds. All you have to do to find out who's been prescribing this is to look on the bottle. It'll have the doctor's name right there. Hello, pharmacy? I need a printout of all the scripts I've had, their dates, and the ordering physician, for the dates X to Y. Thanks. It is highly unlikely that a medical clinic would lose an appointment. Everything is computerized. She likely just went there as she does with any ER. A clinic will keep records on every patient ever seen. Everything is now computerized, thus easily accessible. If she is in the system, they would have found her. In general, they would also book her an appointment for a later date. I find it funny that she describes the oncologist as popular. No oncologist is popular, she is not a bloody plastic surgeon. Her story is full of holes. As to should I sue them? Amber has to prove two aspects of her case, damages and negligence. Damage, what damages has she suffered? Her surgery was successful and she recovered nicely. She did not show any sequels. If she did, it would have been reported in subsequent clinical reports during her follow-up appointments. Unfortunately, she seems to have missed most of them. Negligence, namely, gross negligence. To prove this, you have to show that the oncologist did something that is well beyond what is considered normal in her situation. Namely, that the oncologist deviated a great deal from the clinical guideline practices. I am pretty sure that the legal team of the doctor will be able to prove that they did everything that was consistent with her case. Thank you for watching. I'm waiting for your theories in the comments section down below, I'm really interested to see what you guys are going to say about this.